What's going on everybody? It's Car Mind from Bar Mind Tech and today we got a new video talking about how to set up Vault Warden on your Proxmox server. So this is something that is on the community scripts or the Proxmox helper scripts, however you look at it. It's going to set up Vault Warden as an LXC container so you can run it right off your server and then use it to store or manage all your passwords going forward. If you're not familiar with what Vault Warden is, we're going to cover that right now. So let's flip right over to the wiki. So pretty much, if you're not familiar, Bitwarden is a online service you can get to be a password manager and Vault Warden is a self-hosted distro of it. So here is the GitHub page, it has all the information, and you can see it's constantly maintained because this is something that has sensitive information with it. As it stores and manages all your passwords, they do make sure it's always up to date security wise. So I actually have to go update mine. But you can read through this if you're interested. Pretty much it's just a, another password manager that you can self-host so you have full access and control over it. It has a bunch of different implementations such as multi-factor, YubiKeys, stuff like that. And you could access this either completely outside of your house, inside your house, however you want to host it. And we're going to talk about that next. But this is what we're going to be working with today. There are different ways to implement this, but today, like I said, we're going to be working with an LXC container. There's a couple of different ways that we could host this. We could either host it publicly on a VPS. You have full access everywhere around the world. You could host it at your house. Now, this depends if you're able to open up port 80 or 443, however you want to host it. Or you could host it at home and then you could set it that you need to use like a VPN to get back home so it doesn't have any public access. So you have to be able to get v into the local network to access all your passwords and all the other information. Now you might want to do this because this is going to probably contain all of your passwords. It might hold credit card information, finance information, whatever else you might want to store in it. It's going to hold this in this program encrypted in the vault so you know it's safe. Now, if you open this up to the public, people might find it and might be able to try to break in. So it's totally up to how you want to host it. Today, we're only going to talk about self-hosting it and having it for internal use. I'm not going to talk about how to open it up publicly, but I have done that in the past. If you're interested, and I'll put a link down below so you can check that video out. One of the prerequisites that you are going to need for this video is Nginx Proxy Manager or some other kind of proxy manager in your home lab just because you're going to need an SSL cert for Vault Warden to work. Because of how the network traffic works, it needs to have an HTTPS cert. So it actually can function because you need to access the portal through HTTPS. We're going to go over this during the video, but you do need a, you know, some sort of SSL cert established in your home lab. So you could use this. So if you checked out my Nginx proxy manager video, which I'll have a link below and I'll probably throw a card up in the corner, you could do that as well. Now I've done a lot of rambling, so let's get into the video. So like I said, today we're going to be working in the Proxmox, setting this up as an LXC container. As you can see, I have a demo one that we're going to work with later, but we are going to be working on the bar mine tech server and the community Proxmox scripts or the Proxmox helper scripts, however you want to look at it. So this is the website. If you come over to view scripts, we can actually just come up to the search bar and type in Vault Warden, or you can come over here to miscellaneous down below, and then there'll be Vault Warden right over here. It's going to give us the information and the default specs that it specs out for it. It also gives a link to the website if you're interested in checking it out and the source code to the script. So we're just going to come over here and grab the script. Now we're going to come back to our Proxmox instance and just one thing you might want to look at here are the default settings if you choose to go with it for the Ubuntu or Debian build or if you want to use the Alpine Linux build here's the default specs over here. These are pretty good you can modify them as you need. I'm going to use the default ones today but if you need to change anything I'll show you the option to do it. We're going to come over to our Proxmox server and I'm going to be working with my Barmine tech node so I'm just going to click on that right click to open up a shell and we're going to get a shell going. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so we can work with it. And I'm just going to paste in that script and hit enter. Now it's going to prompt us, do I want to create a new Vault Warden container? I'm going to click yes. And now it's going to start building out the process. Now this is going to be where if you need to make any changes you can. You can come over here and select advanced settings. And in here you'll be able to change the options for hardware usage, the host name, the container ID, or the VM ID. Everything that you might need to change will be right in there. I'm going to use default settings, but if you're somebody who runs like a cluster and you need to use a different ID scheme, or maybe you want to change some of the hardware, you could do that in advanced settings. I'm just going to click default settings because I don't want to change anything. And now we're going to let this run. It does run pretty quickly, but the actual building at the end of the container does take some time. So be prepared for this to go through pretty quickly. You can see that it's starting to build out the LXC. I have it right up here. 
but the actual building of the container is probably going to take at least 10 minutes. So if it gets hung up and it says, you know, building uh, vault warden patients or creating vault warden patients, just be patient because it is working. It's just taking its time to get done. So after it's done installing, we'll be right back and I'll go over how to configure and set up vault warden. Okay, so like I said, at this point, you can see that the container is building out and it's just saying patience and it is going to take a while. So give it about 10, 15 minutes and then you should be all set to work. However, when it is done, it's going to pop up saying it's all done and it's going to give you the IP and URL to access the, your Vault Warden net. And then over there, you can just open it up. So when you do open it up, it's going to look something like this. You're going to get a login page. We're going to say login and create access to your account. Unlike other apps that we've used in the past, there is no default credentials. You are going to make an account. So you can just come over here to create an account. You're just going to have to set up an email address, your name, and a master password. This master password is going to be used to access all of your passwords and everything inside your Vault Warden instance going forward. So make sure that it's something that you'll remember and it's something that's strong because it is going to be the only password set to get into your whole instance of Vault Warden and all the passwords and all the other data inside of it. So like I said, just make sure it's something strong, but also something that you'll remember and easily can type out when you need to. So after we get this account set up, we'll be right back. Okay, so something that's going to happen because you can see we're not using HTTPS is when you do come over here and click create account, you're going to get this red error in the corner saying that it requires HTTPS. That's okay. I'm going to show you right now how we can fix this and then we'll be able to successfully create our account. So like I said, you are going to need Nginx Proxy Manager to do this. Or you're going to need something similar. We use Nginx Proxy Manager because it's just easier. It has a nice interface. So over here, I already have something set up with all my SSL cert. So everything's already going. This is something that I already use in my home lab. So what we're just going to do over here is come over here and we're going to just we need the IP and the port number. So mine's dot 90 when you're using port 8000. Just be familiar with whatever IP you're using. So I'm just going to come over here and make it quickly. So we're just going to do add a proxy host. We're going to do vault demo dot barbine.org. This is the domain that I use in my house. And then over here, we're just going to type in that IP address, which was dot 90. We're going to type in the port, which is 8000. We are going to leave this HTTP. I know I said it's going to use HTTPS, but we'll see how this works in, in a minute. I'm going to check off ca all these. We're going to cache the assets, website, and supports, block exploits. And over here, we're going to come over to the SSL tab. We're going to come over here and select the SSL certificate that I'm using. Again, this is going that you already have this running. So if you don't, make sure you check out the other video, and then you can come back here and work on this. We're going to check off force SSL, and then over here, we're going to click save. Now what this is going to do is make us a new subdomain in the house that's easier to access it, but it's also going to throw in an SSL cert on top of this. So I can actually close this old one out because we're not going to work out of here anymore. And now we can come over here and work out of this new instance. So you can see we're using our domain. We also have an SSL cert, so we're good to work now. So now you can come over here and create your account and do the whole process again. And it's going to allow you to do that. So I just filled my info in really quick. And if I come over here and click create account, you can see now that we're all set and I can actually log in. That's because we're using the, the SSL cert, so that's why it's it's secure now. The Vault Warden's happy so we can work with it. So it's just gonna redirect you to the login page and then from here you can hit continue. And you just need to type in that master password you set. I'll click login. I'll click not now because I don't want to save it in the browser anymore because now we're gonna be using Vault Warden for everything. So now this is the default page when you log in. This is going to be the first Vault Warden page you see. So now you can see over here we have a Getting Started tab. So if you're somebody who uses like the password manager in Chrome, Firefox, whatever it is, you can actually import the data right from there. So if you do want to import some of your data, you can. It's going to be pretty similar in all the browsers. Right now I'm working in Firefox. So we just come over here to the hamburger menu and then there's passwords. And then over here, you would be able to export your data. So you can see over here actually has export passwords. This would put it into some sort of file, whether it's a JSON or something similar. And then you would actually be able to come over here to import data. And you'd be able to import all of that into the Vault Warden instance. So I actually did this with Brave in the past with all my passwords. It exports it into a JSON. And then you could import it straight into Vault Warden and be all set. I don't have any passwords to import right now, so we're not going to do that. So we'll just come back to the home page and then there's also the browser extension. So over here, it's just going to take us over to the store for our browser we're using and you could add it to your browser. So I'm just going to click add to Firefox. And then over here, it's just going to ask me if I want to. So I'm going to click add and we're going to click OK because we're all set. And if I come over here to the puzzle menu, it's shown over there, which is fine. 
now that we have the add-on, the only thing we need to change is we're not going to be using Bitwarden.com. We're going to be using a self-hosted version of it. So you could actually just put in that URL that you just set up. So whatever yours is. And click save. And now you'll be able to log in and access your Vault Warden instance. So I'm just going to type in that. And now you can see over here, we have our Vault Warden up and working. So this is just out of the browser extension. You can pop it out so it is its own page. You have your Vault, you have to send out, you know, whatever info you might need to. And it also has the password generator in here. So this is something I actually use all the time. I've tried to get into the habit of generating long, strong passwords. So I've been using at least 25 characters or longer. And it just gives you some nice secure passwords that you can use. But that's just some of how the add-on works and how you connect it back to your self-hosted instance. So if we just move back over here to Vault Warden, we're going to ignore this for now. And now you can see over here, here's the home page. So the main spot you're pretty much going to be saving all your info in is over here in My Vault. And here's where you can kind of save whatever you want to. So you can have different information, whether it's a login, you can save a credit card, identity info, or you could have a secure note in here. Your, your common one's probably going to be a password. So if you do have the browser extension running in your browser, every time you try to log into an account or you make a new account, it's going to ask you, do you want to save this to Vault Warden? Do you want to you know create a new item? And then there it will actually auto fill the username and it will help you generate a password and, and the URL so it knows every time you log onto that page, hey, this is the credential for this page. So we could just autofill it right from there if you, when you enter your password. Like I said, there's also credit card info and the notes, so you could do that as well. But that's pretty much the bulk of what you're probably gonna be using it for. And I have to say it's been super helpful because I've been able to generate strong passwords that only I have access to and I could auto film all my sites. Other than that, there's just some s simple tools I was kind of hitting on already. So if you want, you can send out credentials or notes or whatever it is. And then you also have the tools like the password generator. So over here is where you can generate passwords. If you want to just make them in here, you can select how long you want the password. You can select the different options, numbers, whatever it is, and it will generate you a password right up there. So that's how you would do that that way. And then other than that, that's really it for Vault Warden. There's some reports if you're interested in, and then there's also some of the settings. You can see over here under preferences, there is a dark mode, so you can change that over here. Maybe you have a different language, you could enter that over here. And then you also have the options for your Vault timeout. So if you want to time out quicker or shorter, you could do that over here. So this is going to be after you unlock your Vault to access it like in the browser or something else. It's going to be how long before it locks and you have to re-authenticate to have access to your Vault. Other than that, there's security. Over here, you can change your password. You can do two-factor. You have some encryption keys over here. You have some domain settings over here that you could work with, and then there's emergency access. So if you, maybe you are in a small organization, you can send emergency contacts so there is somebody else that could access the vault just in case that something happens. But other than that, there's really not much else other than export vault. So let's say you do want to have an offline backup of your vault just in case, you know, maybe you don't have access to it or the instance goes down, you can export it as a JSON. It'll give you an option to export your vault. So I don't have anything in my vault, but I'll we'll show it really quick. And then you can click export vault. And over here, it's just going to give you a JSON. So you can see over here, this is how the vault works when it's you know exported, but I don't have anything in it. So there's nothing to show. If you have all your data in your vault, it would show you everything in there. And then if you ever needed, you could import it back into Vault Warden if you get a new instance or whatever it might be. Just make sure that you save that JSON file in a safe place because it does have all the credentials, URLs, and passwords for all of your logins that you have and any other info that you save in uh, Vault Warden. But really, that's about it. There is an app that you can get on your phone, whether you're on Android or iPhone, and you have access to your Vault Warden as well. It's just going to be the standard Bitwarden app, and then from there, you just link it to your self-hosted instance, like we did in the browser extension. But that's Vault Warden. It's something that I've been using for a while. I, I like it. It's a good product, and it helps me keep all my passwords organized and secure. It also helps me make strong passwords. Like I said, I've been using at least 25 character passwords. And it saves them all in my app. And when I need to autofill them, I can. I just have to copy it right over and I can log in whether I'm on my phone or on my PC.
Now, the question comes down to the security of it. You most likely don't want to have this accessible directly to the public. If somebody gets in, they're going to have all your credentials as well as where they go to, so they'll have access to pretty much all your accounts possible. So if you do want to open this up to the public, you can, but I'm not going to go over how to do that. We are just going to talk about how to have it internally because that's how we set it up today. The best way you could probably do it is host it off your Proxmox server, like I said, in an LXC container. It's just going to be for local access. And then if you do want to access it from outside your house, you could use a VPN, connect back to your LAN or your home network, and then be able to access Vault Warden through there. Another issue it usually runs into having it at home anyway is most ISPs for a home plan don't allow you to open up port 80 or 443 to the public. Because of this, Vault Warden won't work properly to open it up to the public anyway, so it's already one thing. So really the VPN option is probably the best one because it's going to keep your instance most secure and it's going to give you a safe connection back to access all your credentials and anything else that you save in there. I don't want to keep rambling on, so pretty much that's everything you need to know about Vault Warden. Set it up on a Proxmox container. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoy the upcoming holidays and I will see you in the next video.